All right, we're back now. We're gonna do the second part, which is make the burgers for the restaurant. Here at the Little Europe, we only use ribeye. We don't buy like grounded meat. The reason is, in grounded meat, it's pretty much what's left over in the shop. They just put everything in the, in the, the machine here, and then they just grind everything. You never know what you get, basically. So here it is, nice piece of ribeye. We're just gonna trim the sinew off here. There you go, sinew off. Sinew off, there's a little bit more here. You see my piece is a bit lean, but it's gonna do. And then we're gonna chop it. We wanna keep all the fat, of course. You go see here, we're gonna make nice slices to pass in the grinder. Again, chop, chop for the grinder. And again, don't want the grinder to work too hard. My grinder is about one horsepower. It's commercial, but it's not industrial, right? So I wanna, I want it to survive a few years. So I'm gonna go easy on it. So same thing here gonna cut our meat like I said you don't need to use the entire ribeye you could buy a ribeye before you know just to keep it slice some steaks out of your ribeye keep the nicest one reseal them put them in the freezer and then use them next time and only use the butt of the ribeye to do your burgers so that's another way to save money and have delicious steak and delicious ribeye so you see here there we go it's a bit of sinew here we're gonna trim it off Times on the inside, yes. Senior. There you go. Bye-bye. Alright, so we have our grinder here. We're gonna set up our bowl. Let's go see. Now you use a big one because we need a lot of burgers. So here we go. We're gonna put our meat in and point. Point. You can have one of these grinders for an attachment for like a kitchen aid or other robots which is cool. Just make sure if you use KitchenAid, they're not very strong, so don't put too much or, or trim your meat a little bit smaller than this and then everything should go well. As you can see, we're making burgers. Here we go. Put some more. Boom. Now, if you make a lot of burgers, it's very hot here in Taiwan at the moment. Make sure that your meat stays outside the fridge as little as you can. There we go. Because the bacteria inside, you know, it's, it's going faster than, than normal steak. When normal steak, bacteria stays on the outside. When you sear it, you cook it, it's all gone. But this bacteria goes inside the meat. So you want to cook it through and make sure that it's in the fridge all the time. So to clean my grinder here, I'm just gonna drop some onion inside because anyway, I have onion in my recipe and I'm looking for this here, my plunger. There you go, you see here, it's pushing all my meat out. So that way, there is no waste. And here we go. The juice is coming out, perfect, that's over. So again, same recipe, we got our meat here, we got our onions. Now, because I made more meat, I'm gonna put four egg yolks inside. One, there you go. I'm gonna put a lot more Tabasco because there's a lot more meat. Oh, there you go. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, a lot more because a lot more meat again. Very, very simple. Ketchup, binding agent, there you go. Not too much, not too little. Montreal steak spice, this shreds, I think. There we go. Uh, all right, then I add some extra pepper inside to give it another kick. And now here's the funny part. Watch this. Use your hand. Now when we say handmade burgers, handmade burgers. I'm not kidding you. So anyway, I'm gonna mix this. We're gonna come back and show you how to make the patties like the commercial way. Cause you could actually do the same way, for example, if you want to do burgers, but you don't want to do them every day, you want to do a batch, right? So I'm going to show you how to, how to actually make the patties, like for a quantity, and then how to store them, how to freeze them, to make sure you can reuse them later. Because if you stack them all together, they're all going to be sticky, it's not going to be great. So, all right, catch you later. All right, we're back. So as you can see, just out my meat. I left it in the freezer for about 10, 20 minutes. So it became like more compact, easier to work with. Now my burgers are six ounces or about 166 grams. So to do this next operation for the restaurant, because we make a lot of them, we don't want them to stick together. The same for you at home. If you're gonna make a batch, let's say you wanna make 12 burgers 
and uh, you want to freeze them later, I'm going to show you how to do it without them sticking and very easy to handle. So what we're going to use is uh, oven paper or parchment paper. For me, I cut them a little bit larger than the size I want for my burgers. I'm going to use a mold, right? As you can see here, the mold fits on the inside. So I'm going to start like this. So to not dirty my scale because I wake everything in the restaurant because what I write is what I sell. So here we go, paper. I take a little bit of meat, put it on. I check my grams, there you go. Oops, a little bit too much. And then we're gonna slap the burger together, make it firm. We're gonna put the paper in the pan here, the mold on top, then we're gonna press the burger in. Yes, then we're gonna remove the mold. You see how it's round? So when we grill it, it's not gonna be like, it's not gonna fall apart. So we just press a little bit, remove it here. Then what we do is repeat the operation I'll sh just show you a few one. I won't take too much of your time here. Like stuff. Here we go. 160. So again, we move it here. Put the mold on top. Press in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack them like this. But you see here the paper is gonna go over the other. We're gonna make a row like this. I'll make another one just to make sure that you understand the principle of this. Again, 160. We take it off, put it in the pan, and then we press, take off the mold, and then again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this operation. When it's done, I'm going to show you what to do with the burgers. I'll see you in a second. We're back. So you see we did all the burgers here. I made like 26 burgers. I double stacked them. I put a pellicle in the middle. Now I'm going to just finish wrapping. Now, I know you guys maybe don't have like a big freezer like Aesop. You can do the same process with a smaller pan, right? You can stack two or three or four high, it's okay as well. So what we're gonna do now is put them in the freezer. We're gonna freeze them very good. And then after, once they're frozen, we're gonna take them out. Oh, give me a second. And we're gonna take one and then after that we can stack them one over the other one. And because they're frozen, they won't stick together. So you can put them in a Ziploc bag, make sure there's no air inside, and then you can keep them in the freezer for like two, three weeks. So after that, just defrost them, start the barbecue, and just grill them, you have the best burger you ever had. All right guys, so I'll catch you next time. Send me some comments or send me some requests. That was a request for somebody who said, who asked me how to make a good burger for barbecue, so there you go, I answer you. Catch you later.